This is Dallas White. And this is Tim Harbolic. And this is Standard Time Uncensored. Woo! All right. Is this episode six? Yeah. Holy shit. Six. At episode 10, we should just do episode 10, episode 20, episode 30, and that way it goes quicker. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll just count by that. <laughs> I, uh, I ended up watching uh, Kill Game. Dave Can you in. send it to me? Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay, it was cool, really good. I was looking for it, and I found, like, you know, obviously like, yeah. some crazy shit on YouTube. <laughs> fucking, I didn't even know what the fuck it was. It's like, all right. Yeah. Listener out there, uh, David Gaylor was our guest last week, and he mentioned some films that are out. Uh, and this specific one, Kill Game, is on Vimeo, and uh, he shaved his head for the role. And, uh, yeah, that definitely worked. I was, I was... Blown really? away by it. Yeah, he looks completely different. I know. Like, when he shaved, when he just shaved his face, he looks, like, completely different. But I can't imagine him with a shaved head. That's wild. I ended up having to... So we were texting the other day, and uh -huh. uh, you were in the doctor's office for you, were you? Yeah, for me. I was in the doctor's office for me. What happened? Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm okay. I just uh, was going through a routine checkup. You know, it's... Oh. I mean, uh, I'm not okay. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, there's definitely something wrong with me. I'm 36 and I shit my pants more than a 36 year old should. Did they hold them and like tell you to cough? Oh my God. I, yeah, of course. That's at my <laughs> own request though. I, I get a sports physical and I don't play sports. <laughs> you know, they just they do it anyway. Me. Yeah. They got to check me for a hernia at every visit. I can't wait <laughs> oh. to colonoscopy season that's my favorite <laughs> oh gosh i know i know what is it is it the colonoscopy once you turn 30 that you have to like you should go get checked is that what that is no i think it's after 50 oh maybe it's you know what maybe it's like the the colon the not colonoscopy but the ugh, what do they call it like they put the finger up you and everything the prostate yeah prostate yeah exam. that one is that what I think that I don't one know. Is Maybe I should get that checked. <laughs> Sharon, can you check my prostate? <laughs> <laughs> you end up going to the doctors like five times in one week, and you're like, I need to check my oh, prostate yeah. again. Yeah. And they're like, dude, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I know. This is enough. Okay. No, I'm not going. I'm not going three knuckles deep again. Okay. This is unreal. Get out of here, Mr. Harbolic. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, so uh, how was your how was your weekend? Uh, weekend was good. I didn't get any prostate exams, but <laughs> oh, okay. That's I good. worked. What the hell else did I do? I just hung out. Uh, we're really into puzzles in this household right now, so that's Ooh. been a lot of fun. Do you glue them and put them in a frame and put them up on the wall and stuff? We have not framed them yet, but we have glued a bunch of them. You know, when I finish my basement downstairs. I would like to have a little area where we have all of the puzzles that we've completed. I saw that oh. in somebody's house, a customer's house. They had all these puzzles all over the place that they did. And I was like, holy shit. I mean, it's pretty yeah. time consuming. It is. Yeah. You got to definitely we, have time for it. I mean, I mean, my kids are young. They're five, five and four. So it's like we haven't moved past. I think 300 pieces is the largest we've done. I think they're working on a 500 piece now, but it's so funny just seeing their reaction. They're like 500 pieces. Oh my <laughs> God. Cause and when they were babies, they were doing like the 10 piece puzzles. Yeah, and... exactly. <laughs> That's where I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm at like yeah. a, a, the 15 piece max. <laughs> <laughs> no, but once you start them, you get so addicted to them, and you just keep going, and it's like, it's oh yeah, it really addicting. you get to the 
you get to that last piece that's missing and and all hell breaks loose you know what's so funny is yeah they're always each of them they're always constantly like saving a piece and they're like i want this to be the last piece and i'm gonna put it up like no just leave it on the table because that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna fuck me yeah. up so bad just leave the pieces <laughs> yeah. there there's a process if you, in this yeah case. if you want the last piece we'll just when we get to the last piece you know you can do this one and then you can do the next one and you know split it up mm -hmm. that way well anyway we'll bring our uh we're gonna bring our guest on uh he's we in the green, green room right now in the green a, room how is that green yeah, room have, what's the spread like this week um i think it's like a charcuterie board with like cheese and beef sticks and a beef uh, sticks what the fuck are yeah. beef sticks <laughs> oh like slim jims <laughs> i don't know our assistant it's, made it up so i don't know why i don't know why she put that in there but we um, got slim jims and sharp cheddar <laughs> slim jims sharp cheddar and what else we yeah. got? We got pork rinds. This guest specifically asked for green M and M's, so we have oh. to watch our cool, you know. So. Green, all green. Wait, is that the is that the one that makes you horny, or is that Skittles? Uh, you know what? Which Tim? one? I don't is think it it's green? Skittles or M and M's. <laughs> oh, I've just been <laughs> loading it's... up on green 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 M and M's, and just I thought no. Remember? <laughs> do you remember that from back in the day? It was like. If you eat a lot of green Skittles or green M&Ms, it means you're horny or something. I've never heard that before. Jesus I Christ. think someone was just screwing with you. Probably. You went Fuck. straight home and eat, ate all the green M&Ms. You're like, sweet. Yeah, it's like, all right, everybody, <laughs> give me your green M&Ms. Yeah. Got to do this introduction here because yes, let's, it's let's a biggie. Yes, let's introduce them. It's a big one. It's a biggie. Yes. This, this person is an award-winning director. Oh, Award-winning cinematographer. <laughs> in 2016, he founded his own production company, The Film Forge. And lastly, he's an enthusiast musician. Give it up for Anthony Kadasvati. Hey. hey. He's here. What's up? <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? I also just want to say to the listeners out there, uh, there are no beef sticks. There is no charcuterie board. <laughs> I have been uh, ripped off from this green it's room bullshit. experience. Uh, yeah. So, oh my gosh. Uh, it, Lindsay. Next time, <laughs> beef sticks and green M and M's. Apparently, green M and M's. Yeah, <laughs> I load up on them. Beef sticks yeah. and green M and M's. Uh, What's up, guys? Uh, or green M and M's and then beef sticks. You know. I can't say green M and M's right now. I'm like, who wants green M Ms? I mean, I assume I assume it was the green M and M's. I mean, that's the sexy M and M, right? I, it, yeah, right. I think it is. <laughs> Have you ever heard that, Anthony? Uh, no, absolutely not. No, but Jesus Christ, makes sense. <laughs> Maybe this was a fucking. <laughs> yeah, no. Apparently, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> you and Dallas both were like just blindsided by my green M&M &M yeah. thing. Yeah, I Maybe might have I... to just go try it out. Get a big old bag from uh, the grocery store. Eat it all. Sold. <laughs> yeah, green m and Just a big bag. Yeah. Just run around humping pillows. <laughs> Anthony, did is that how you pronounce your last name, Cotaspotty? Yeah, yeah, you nailed it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was I so always nervous. Called you Coda spotty. <laughs> I I mean Co Coda, I, Coda spotty. There's a uh, ten thousand different ways people pronounce it, so I've gotten used to it. it what's the worst one? Oh man. Um, well, I'll. I mean, I've had it spelled. I think probably spelling is the even worse offender. Um, I've been on like call sheets as like Kaka Spokoki and like <laughs> just like the the most outrageous like. Like, it's like if someone, like, the worst telephone game version of, like, my name has been on call sheets in the past. No, but, yeah, no. I feel like the majority of, like, pronunciations is, like, Codespotty, which is, like, or Codespotty. Okay. So we had our uh, we had our friend Jessica and Buell on the show uh, a couple weeks back, and she called you Cody on the podcast with us. That's right. <laughs> do, you stump do you sometimes go by Cody? Well, I mean, no, I have, I have some friends that will call me that, but I think it's mostly because people get confused by my Instagram handle 
And like people uh-huh. just call me like, cause it's Cody shots, but people think it's like Cody shots. And then people think my name is like Cody <laughs> sometimes. And it's, I shot myself in the foot with that, but, um, but yeah, I do have people that will call me Cody thinking that is my name. We, uh, we've been going down the rabbit hole with, uh, the Baker brothers because it was for sure. I, I'm sure Tim agrees. It was one of the best experiences of our acting careers. Um, well, and I gotta say, because we, we talked for a little bit, but I think we were pretty focused on, on getting the film done. Was it O oh Brother Where Art Thou that inspired the Baker Brothers? I mean, def- definitely from like a look standpoint, um, that was like such an inspiration to me. I-, I honestly don't even remember if there was like a single kind of spark of a thing that inspired it. Um, I just remember like being at a point where I just wanted to like write something and make something, and I just sat down and kind of like vomited it up. Um, but yeah, I mean, brother, oh, brother, art that was you know one of my all time favorites. So I'm sure that like just unconsciously that came out a lot through that because um, I think those characters are just so hilarious. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think it, I think it was a mixture of a lot of things. Um, but yeah, that was definitely one of the mo- the more like visual for sure references. Do you have a yeah. process when you write these things down, or is it just like you have an idea and then you go from there? Or is there like a formula? Uh, yeah. No, dude. I mean, I wish I had a formula. Um, that's what I'm, t- <laughs> I'm trying to get better at, like being more formulaic. Because I feel like, no, I kind of just like have a idea and then just start like vomiting. Um, I mean, it's a different process for everyone. I think like I'm very much a analytical structured person. And that's like the opposite of how I write. So I, I think I'm trying to get a little more like regimen and process in my writing. Um, but, uh, but no, yeah, that was complete. Baker brothers was complete word vomit. And I mean, like, you know, it's a fun, that was the point of it. It was supposed to be just like a fun, you know, yeah. Well, no, was, well all nonsense kind of thing. So it worked. It out. was great word vomit. It was great. And it turned out to be something special to a lot of people, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, it, it makes me so, happy to hear you guys say that because i mean yeah that was such a a fun experience i mean looking back like in the moment i was stressed out of my mind but uh, <laughs> you didn't seem it. <laughs> look, look, looking back i mean like it was such a fun time yeah. um, director's life <laughs> yeah. yeah uh and i mean that was like i mean the bigger brothers was my first like you know my first mate like short film of any like substance i mean i had made some some smaller little like short things but I think I just put a lot of like pressure into like making sure like I want to make this right kind of thing. I was wondering with the writing and directing of of that is is that something you would sort of do again? You would write something and then direct it, or or maybe you know have write something and then have somebody else direct or you know that sort of thing. I think for writing, I would always prefer to direct my own writing, but the opposite, I. I have no issue with like I, I I'm actually working on a project right now that I I did not write. I have something up on Slated. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Slated dot com. Um, yeah, I think. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's just I've never been yeah. on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I have a script up there right now. Um, it's a feature, and it's basically uh, for those out there who uh, Slated dot com is it basically puts your project in a. Uh, kind of a database where investors can come in and invest in your film and then they can also option your your script and um, things like that so it kind of gets writers kind of with producers I would say oh, that's really cool. kind of it yeah it meets everybody together like I've yeah. gone on there and there would be projects where you could just show your interest to be a producer or, or an actor and oh, that. If, yeah it's really neat Um but uh, there's a lot of databases uh, out there, and I feel like every once in a while I'll come across one, and I'm like, oh, well, I, I didn't know about that one. Uh, is there databases that you, that maybe during Break Baker Brothers you didn't know about, and you kind of, you know, found out about it? No. I mean, I'm like, I'm so bad about, like, 
having my finger on the pulse of like those kind of things. Uh, I definitely like rely on, uh, some of my friends around me to like put me onto those things. Cause I just feel like I never know the right places to be, uh, at the right time. So, um, so no, I mean, I have, I've never put my, any of my scripts up anywhere. Um, but again, I mean, I guess up until this point only because like, if I'm writing something, I plan to make it myself kind of thing. Like, did you know about actors access or was that something that you, you kind of fell into? No. So my buddy, uh, Josh, who was, who helped out on the short Josh Nowak, mm -hmm. um, he was the one that put me on to actors access. And I think, I think he had used it in the past before. And I think like when we were starting casting, I, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, any casting that I had done for anything in the past was, you know, uh, uh, entirely kind of locally and through like local agencies. So I had no idea of like any kind of national like, like route backstage. to take. So um, yeah, backstage actors access. Those are all ones that I kind of found out through the help from like Josh. Yeah. You have a great Thanks. team around you, right? I mean, you, everybody was great there. Oh, One I mean, guy I remember is Brett. Do you remember Brett? Do you Oh yeah, dude. That's <laughs> Brett was hilarious. He like worked, I think, with just me and Dallas or something. But yeah, the guy was so funny. I don't know why you didn't write a part for him in there. He would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've done we we've made some things in the past. I mean, he is truly like hilarious. Oh, uh, dude, he's so he, funny. He's such a great like actor and like writer. Like he's he's made for comedic timing for sure. Oh yeah. Do you guys write like as a group sometimes? I don't, I don't know if we've ever like really written as, I mean, he, so he's with loose films, shout out loose films. They do awesome stuff, poser. Um, and they kind of write or they, they do a lot of like concepting and writing together. So I think okay. they were all pretty collaborative with like poser. Um, but no, I have not written, uh, we've always talked about it. I mean, we've done like some like little sketchy kind of things, but never anything of like, you know, short or feature kind of like length that we've really collaborated on. But, but we all like, we'll toss each other our scripts to kind of get feedback on and yeah. back and forth. So it's a, it's a good working relationship. Are you at film yeah. forge still focusing like primarily on uh, commercials and whatnot? That's definitely what pays the bills. Yeah, but exactly. uh, <laughs> we, this, I mean, we, we kind of recently had a sit down, um, cause we're getting to a point in kind of the commercial work that we're doing that we can kind of like, you know, breathe a little bit and like figure out the next step kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and features, I mean, those are, that's the next step. It's where we always wanted to end up. So, so was yep. there like a Baker brothers feature film? In, in the <laughs> uh, I mean, I will never say no to that. So, <laughs> Tim and I have a really good theory. A theory? A theory of like what they're doing or what they where they came from? Uh Tim, don't don't get me wrong, but did we did we say something about uh Alan and Eddie Baker like traveling across America to try and find their biological dad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I think it was because then they're like, mom is like, no, please don't leave. Please don't leave. And then like the two, you know, brothers just leave into like a car and they, you know, don't really know how to drive, but they'll learn along the way. And they just get into a bunch of crazy stuff along the way uh, across America because they have an address to go find their biological dad. And... Uh, <laughs> And, and I, don't how, I don't know how they end. find out Marie is their mother. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. That seems, that makes my, uh, like little part there where I'm attracted to Marie sounds. So, so <laughs> you're, sick. A creep. you're a creep. Tim. <laughs> so, so sick, but I mean, it makes me seem more, more brain dead. So that works. <laughs> <laughs> An adventure with the Baker brothers is, uh, that would be the dream. Yeah, even Jessica said she's like if if Anthony called me, she actually she said if Cody calls me and says, <laughs> "Hey, we want to have you a part of a new film and there's Dallas and Tim." She's like she's all in. Like we're all all in. So, um, I'd have to move some things around. 
<laughs> Check your schedule. To take my lump of vacations. <laughs> I mean, like I lucked out so so heavy with all of you. Like like everyone that was a part of that cast was like. I mean, I'm I'm truly a phony, and everyone around me really made that movie. So, got to give yourself credit. That was that was great. I mean. I mean, even the script, like as soon as I saw, saw the sides from the audition, I was like, yep, definitely. This is, this is the best. I would love to be a part of this. Yeah, I know. And, uh, <laughs> was, was I up against anybody, Anthony? Because it took a little while for, uh, for me to get the I, part. So, uh, <laughs> I, I don't like, I, I mean, truly, I don't think so. I mean, like, I feel like when I saw both of you, I was like, like, this is, I was like, should it be this easy? Like, this is Eddie and Alan. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't remember anyone that was even close for either of your roles. I heard the name Eddie, and I immediately thought of Cousin Eddie from Christmas Vacation. I was like, oh, I could be it. I could be an idiot easily. This is, I feel like I'm being typecasted here. This is crazy. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys are both perfect. I just remember the funniest thing from... Uh from filming uh for those just a couple of days is we were on the last shot of the film where and this is the part where everybody clears out of the church because you know everybody begins to not take alan and eddie seriously <laughs> and then dave the pastor you know walks out with his <laughs> oh one hand tied God. to the chair and then the one guy who was he was an extra he was up front he fell asleep during the take <laughs> oh, and then wakes up still filming and realizes, oh shit! I need to get out of the church. <laughs> that was so funny. Out. Oh, it was I so was great. Done. And I don't, I don't know if I mean I don't, I don't. We didn't use that take, right? That's not in the short. <laughs> no, I, don't I, I can't so. remember. I I no. can't remember why. Like I think there was a specific reason that we couldn't use it. But like I remember laughing so hard and like wishing that I could put that in there because it <laughs> it would have just added like even more hilarity to the fact that. This guy just fell asleep while they're robbing it, too. <laughs> yeah, while um, they're robbing the place. Out cold. We only played it a hundred times back at the cabin. He was such a sweet man. And, yeah, uh, he just just was having too good of a time and just kind of nodded off a little bit. <laughs> well, well, it is a long day. It was. Yeah. It was a long day. Dave, too. He was so hilarious. Oh, I just, I don't know. Wait, I don't know when you guys talked to him. I just, uh, I got to work with him again recently um on a on a commercial oh really yeah he we we did a little like commercial for the um the mid ohio ymca and we were able to to use him for a scene so we got to catch up a little bit and he's like you know you i mean you talk to him he's like the nicest guy in the world <laughs> oh yeah so nice yeah he's so busy too like uh we talked to him last week and he does like film after film like he's always doing stuff and i was like man if only I could be that consistent. I mean, it's a doggy dog world out there. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's dog dog everywhere, but yeah, I can't imagine in, in LA. And Dave's yeah. a, uh, a musician as well. He's a drummer. Wait, Dave's a drummer? Dave's a drummer. What? I don't know if I've ever uh, talked to him about that. I'm a drummer. Oh, you are? Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm a drummer too. I Wait, I think I do remember talking to you about that. Yeah, Did we ever talk about that? About, yeah, we talked about music a little bit, I believe. I mean, like, I barely play anymore, but... Uh... <laughs> Me too. But that, wait, does, so Dave, is, does Dave, is Dave, like, playing in a band? No, he has, um, said he, think, has, he plays no. for the church. He, he has okay. said he played for the church. He's got, like, an old, um, a Singerland, uh, an old school, like, vintage drum set. It's probably worth a lot of money. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, he yeah. sings too. He he told us he uh, he sang the national anthem in front of like over thirteen thousand people in an arena at a baseball I, game or something. No, it's a Dayton, what a Dayton basketball game? Oh, basketball! Dayton. What the yeah. heck? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I would have had him singing a hymn in the church for Baker Brothers. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that would have been great. What a man of talent, right? <laughs> yeah. I remember the first day of Baker Brothers, me and Dallas were up, we were running lines, but we were doing it like Sling Blade. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Anthony, remember you yelled up, you're like, yes, do that. 
I'm surprised that we didn't have more bloopers. Oh, I mean, I'm sure they're in there. Man, I need. I mean, I still have all those hard drives. I'll go. I'll go dig out some uh, a blooper reel. <laughs> blooper reel for us. And the one blooper of Dallas dropping the gun actually made it into the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, that was like, yeah, some of those moments were too good to too good to leave out. Yeah, I uh, I saw it and I was like, I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I thought I messed up that take, but I just kept going because I was like, yeah. you know, you never know what you can use and what you can't use. So, like, I just mm-hmm. kept going with it. And Dave reacted perfectly with, <laughs> with his part. And, yeah, we just kept going with it. But uh, I love the uh, opening when uh, when we when we stood up and, Tim, you're, <laughs> you ran into that tree. Um, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. The pillowcase on your head. That was funny as hell. Oh, my God. It was- one of my favorite beats. <laughs> it says so. This I, I did some research, and I it says that you're a gamer. Do you do you have time to play video games, Anthony, or is that uh, is that something that you used to do? No, no, no. I definitely make time for games. Still, <laughs> okay. it's like my it's definitely my therapy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, gaming was like you know it was my my first love. Uh, my N sixty four. Back oh, in '97, man. but yeah, I mean, I that's that's usually how I wind down at the end of the night. So I, actually, right before I got on here, I was I was gaming a bit. What's your uh, go-to game right now? I play a lot of Overwatch. Um, I've heard it. It's just like a PC. It. It's like a PC kind of like it's a shootery kind of game, but like it's a little more involved than like a Call of Duty kind of thing. Um, I've been playing Call of Duty on my phone blows my mind that you can do that on your phone yeah i can like call of duty has a mobile app and it (laughs) it's funny because i go to my iphone storage and it's like that one app is like at least 20 gigs like it's because you keep downloading new maps and like (laughs) it's crazy do you have like a controller attachment or do you just like play with your thumbs kind of thing i play with my thumbs figure it's a hassle to take it on and off because of the case and everything but I used to love hearing that. Quit camping. Like, no, I don't want to run out there because I get killed every two seconds. I'm going to camp. <laughs> Let me camp. <laughs> Put up a fire. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to pitch a tent over here in the corner and just hide for the rest of the game. I'm like, don't run by. I won't shoot you. Just don't shoot me. I, the amount of times that I got teabagged in those and, like, I was, like, the last kill and somebody's just, like, jumping up and down on my head and I don't even know they're there and then I just get blasted <laughs> and then they like play it at the end the replay of it yeah they play the replay of me getting teabagged <laughs> and then just to like, rub it in yeah worst player of the game take yeah. a look once more <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm laying there on the ground like <laughs> my character just laying there with his gun pointed to nowhere <laughs> <laughs> when I worked for A and E, I um, that was my claim to fame. Like I love playing Madden, and I I got to the championship round of the A and E Madden tournament, and I lost to a true gamer. And it was the year of the Patriots. Remember the 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 Falcons Patriots Super Bowl where the Falcons had like a twenty eight point lead and blew it. it yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it was that year. So uh, I won a uh, an A and E <laughs> laptop case. So that was cool. Oh, dang. Congrats, man. You still have it? I still, I'm actually looking at it right now. It's, it's dang, yeah, you used out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> it holds a laptop. That staring. I, I don't even know if there's anything in it, actually. It's green M&M's. That's what's in there. Yeah, there green go. M&M's. That's where I store <laughs> nice them. Nice little carrying case. <laughs> Gotta stay horny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just in case. I usually have a fanny pack on me during the day, just in case. You never know. Oh, oh green M&M's quick. Come on. <laughs> so, Anthony, did you do any, like, film classes growing up in, in college or anything? Uh, so, I, I mean, I went to school for media production. Um, so, I I was kind of like, I mean, I was pretty active through college doing kind of video work. But, I mean, I, I kind of just fell into it because through high school and music was my goal. And I think like senior year, you know, just some like things turned and doors closed, other ones opened. And I, I 
was, you know, going to college and I had no idea what I was really going to do. And I was like, well, like, you know, I kind of like movies, I guess. Uh, so I'll do video production and see what happens. I mean, I had no, like, you know, I was 18 and I didn't really like have any grandiose vision for my life. So I was definitely down to just like throw the darts and see where it lands. There was, I went to university of Akron and they had like a student run TV and radio station. And I, I got involved with that. It was just like extracurricular. And I think that's where I kind of like started to like really start to shoot and enjoy shooting. And, but I still didn't really like, you know, know if this was going to be what I did for my career. And then when I moved down to Columbus for my first job, for like at this commercial production company, um, I think that's where it started to like really like click and attach. Um, and I just started to really like, you know, being on sets and getting creative and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I kind of just worked out classes wise in college. I, I mean, I loved my college experience. I wouldn't say the University of Akron was like the best uh, <laughs> school to go for that. I mean, the the student production, like the extracurricular stuff, like that was all great. Um, the actual, like my actual major, I wouldn't say that I like, it was just very like rooted in like, you know, old school kind of techniques and like ideology of production and, and all that stuff. So it was, it was pretty archaic, I would say. I think I learned the most just like once I moved down to Columbus and, and actually started doing it and actually being on sets. I think that's where I really like cut my teeth and learned everything. But you worked with Dallas on another film, right? After Baker Brothers. Was that Death? Yeah. Death by Power? I don't remember like how, how, how soon was that after Baker Brothers? I was trying to remember. I mean, <laughs> I guess it was pretty, pretty like within a year at Baker Brothers, right? Yeah, yeah. Andrew Broadhurst, he does a lot of film, and he wanted to write something. He told me about this idea about this, uh, where, you know, PowerPoints are boring, and it would be really cool to have a manager uh, hire hire somebody to basically redo his PowerPoint, and he just wants all the flares, the sl you know, all the transitions. He wants this to be spectacular because it's going to be a big presentation. And then he drives uh, his assistant that's editing the PowerPoint crazy to the point where she kills him. Tim, I uh, contacted Anthony and was like, hey, we want to shoot up in Columbus or at least near Columbus. I don't know where exactly we shot but uh, we just got an Airbnb for a couple days. We use the garage as like an inter interrogation room. And it's up on YouTube. So you can literally just type in like death by PowerPoint short film. And it's the first thing that comes up. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm I was like, watch that yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually had as much fun as I did making the PowerPoint credits. Um, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not like editing is, I mean, I, I edit, I would not call myself an editor and I wouldn't, I definitely would not say I enjoy editing, but that was like so much fun. <laughs> it's like literally just making a PowerPoint yeah. based on what you guys were messing around with in the, in the film. Yeah. Yeah. I go on this banter of, of what I want in the PowerPoint and I'm calling all the shots out to her and then you never see the thing is throughout the film, you never see the PowerPoint, you never see the laptop screen, you never see any of that. And it's until the the movie ends, when the credits come up, the credits are the slide sh uh, are the presentation, the PowerPoint. So you get to see, and I just told I think I, I was in, and it's weird that I remember this because I was in Vegas, I was working in Vegas at an event. And I think I, I messaged, I was messaging you back and forth, Anthony, and I was like, just go big, you know, do whatever, <laughs> just have random stuff in there. So yeah. I, I'm glad it was fun for you because <laughs> it would have gave me a headache. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it did give me a headache too, but I do remember just be like, this is like so ridiculous and so fun. I mean, I was like, yeah, throwing unicorns across the screen and like, it was, <laughs> uh, it was just ridiculous, but. I give you guys a yeah, lot of credit a lot of fun. because editing is 
Wow. I can't even put my film reel together. I can't even do that. Tim, I told you, send me, you pile it all up and send it to me. I'm going to make it for you. I really don't have too, too much now. I mean, I haven't really done anything. Well, I have uh, the, the Doom chat, but I know I really wanted to. Uh, I, I, one night, I think the last time I spoke to you, Anthony, I was texting you and I was, I, I have to be honest, I was pretty stoned. And I was telling you, I had, <laughs> I had an idea. I wanted to do a whole bunch of Forrest Gump scenes, but as a fat person, well, because I'm fat, but I wanted to do, and call it Fat Forrest. So, no, you're not. And everything would be like, like just like him running out of breath, and like when he's running from the kids with the rocks, <laughs> or like you know, just like when he walks out onto the deck, and he, like when he sees Jenny coming up the front lawn, like maybe he falls through the deck. You know, he's just all these things that would <laughs> happen to Forrest if he was fat or he stopped for an ice cream truck in the middle of his ruins, his whole continuously or his ridiculously long run. I, I, I don't know why I wanted to do oh, that. Man. And I wanted to do fat pit because I was watching Brad Pitt chop wood in legends of the fall. And I just pictured me chopping wood with my ass crack hanging out and like just ruining a really <laughs> dramatic scene. <laughs> so I thought about all the, yeah, fat pit, but yeah, I don't think you responded. And, um, and I was like, yeah, maybe the, okay. So maybe I'm, that wasn't, a I'm good sorry. Idea. No. no, it's all right. I get Never, it. No, 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 it, no, no, no. It was, I love that idea. I'm, I'm truly, I think I've, and I've gotten worse over time, but I am, I, and I've always like, uh, denied that I'm a bad texter, but I've, I've nope. come to accept that I am you a are. bad texter yeah, because I'll, op I'll open a text, I'll be doing something and I open a text and I read it and I'll like respond to it in my head and I'll be like, I'm going to respond to this as soon as I'm done doing whatever the thing I'm doing. <laughs> and then I, and then I just don't respond. I need, this is, if anyone from Apple, I'm sure they're listening to this podcast. Oh, yeah. I need <laughs> them to be able to like in Gmail, uh, unread a message. Oh, that is my yes. ask because that is the Achilles heel of my bad texting. Yep. <laughs> Cause then people see it and they're like, wow, what a dick. <laughs> but no, that I love that idea. I, no, you're really not a dick at all. Would I was love joking. to shoot that with you. I like thought about it and <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was, but I but I feel like a dick because I do I do forget to respond to people very consistently. No, you're not the only one. I do it too. So I think there's it happens a lot, man. You just get busy, and uh, it's I mean you're a really busy guy. You know, I just figure, yeah, that's what things. I it's, that's always that's what I always think is you're just busy because I I've had that scenario. I would text Anthony and be like, hey, you know, whatever, and then. I wouldn't hear a response, but then, you know, sometimes you would respond, but it would be like two weeks later. And I'd be like, I've already deleted my texts. I'm like, I don't know what I texted him. <laughs> no context. Uh, oh hilarious. God. So, so what this really, what better. we're doing here today, we brought you on to have an intervention about your texting issues. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, just, this is what it's that's true reason. You guys are the dicks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had a very funny intervention story about my, my friend who was just telling me this. It's fresh in my head. Um, you know, he's a bit of a drinker, right? And his family he comes from a line of, of drinkers. <laughs> and, and they tried to have an intervention for him. And they're like, you know, talking to him. And they're all like, he's like, it was his birthday. And they're, so they're, um, they're saying, you know, you got to really calm down. You can't really drink that much. And it's like, why are you doing this on my birthday? And then like, okay, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You, you want to do a shot? <laughs> and they just start like, so it completely twisted. It was from getting them to not drink. And then there was his birthday and now they're, they bought him birthday shots. <laughs> so they set this whole thing up and then fucked it all up by getting him shots. Successful intervention. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bring that's booze. okay we'll cut it out we'll cut it out yeah. <laughs> wait yeah what all what what's the uh what is, wait yeah what is the the length is usually end up like an hour yeah it always ends up being around an hour and then i try and get it down close to 45 minutes uh, i'm sorry okay. our editor gets it down to 45 minutes which is really me gotcha. but um <laughs> yeah yeah he cuts a lot of my but, shit out yeah. 
It ends up only being Dallas. It's only me and Anthony having a conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually, Tim's head just goes out of the logo. Mm-hmm. It's not there anymore. Just slowly, every day, it's just a little farther out. <laughs> yeah, it slowly gets cut off from the from the edge. Small, <laughs> That'd be actually pretty small. funny. Right. Uh, but yeah, before we let you go, we, we always ask our guests... Uh, what movies or shows have you recently watched that you enjoyed that you would recommend us watching? That's a good question. Okay, so currently, I mean, this is no uh, no new secret thing, but I'm I'm currently rewatching Sopranos, and man, if anyone out there has still yet not watched The Sopranos, get on it. Um, yep, that's me because I feel like. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like everyone's seen it, but also it's wild how many people I've talked to that it's like, oh yeah, I've heard, I've heard that's like the OG great series, and I'm like, it is. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> yeah. it's so good. I gotta um, watch it. I've, I've, so Sopranos. I've, yeah, James Gandolfini is wonderful, huh? Oh my god, and and it's been. I mean, it's been so long since I've watched it, but. It's. I forgot how amazing he like truly is in that show. It's so good. Um, so Sopranos. Let's see another show that I watched recently. Andor. Holy shit! Fantastic. I don't know if either of you have watched that. Um, I'm like a huge Star Wars nerd, and like a lot of Star Wars nerds, a lot of Star Wars has not been living <laughs> up to expectations recently. Mm-hmm. But Andor is. Grand Slam knocked out of the park. Really? What else? I feel like I uh, I wish I would have had a list prepared. Yeah, we require um, each guest to have like 10, 10 movies and shows. So ten gotta, to fifteen. Wait, you no, you're fuck. No, no, wait, no, no, you're fucking me. Okay, okay. Uh, I was like, shit, dude. I don't. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of a movie that I've seen recently. Uh, wait, you know what? Wait, I can see it. the thing is, is like I have to. Do you guys use Letterboxd? No. A letterbox? Yeah. Wait, do you know what letterbox is? Have no you heard of that? No. Is it an app? Okay, well, this is okay. This is not a movie or a TV show, but it's a recommendation for an app about movies and TV shows. Uh-huh. Um, it's literally like a, it's like a, um, it's kind of like an, it's a social media app about movies and TV. So, like, you can like do a diary of what you've watched or like rate movies and like make lists based on dude. It's awesome. Um, interesting. All and, right. you, and, and you can, you know, you can make your profile and you have friends and you can see what they're watching and that kind of stuff. But, uh, but I have to log what I watch because I forget so quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. Oh, a recent movie that I saw that I loved was uh, Corsage which I don't know if either of you have heard of it. I didn't even really know what it was, but um, my wife took me to see it and it was fantastic. Vicky Kripes. She was fantastic. Um, the music was great. The score was great. Uh, cinematography. Amazing. Um, and it's definitely like, I'm very much like a plot lover. Um, my wife is definitely not. She's the exact opposite. She hates plotty movies. Mm. So going into this, I <laughs> did not have high expectations of <laughs> uh, my need for plot, but uh, it was great. So movie-wise, recently, Corsage, TV, and or Sopranos. Where, where are you at these days still? You're, are you in New York still? I'm in, I'm in New York in Putnam Valley. Okay. It's kind okay. of like in the woods, so it's nice. It's Which, normal. like, where where in New York is that? <laughs> it's like uh, probably about an hour, maybe a little bit, probably about an hour and 15 minutes up the Taconic from the city. Is that north? Yeah, that's north, north of the city. Okay. Dallas, how far are you from New York? Are you like four hours-ish? Well, I I used to live in Maryland, but yeah, it used to Oh be- my god, yeah, sorry. Now it's like five, yeah. now it's six, uh, six, seven hours away. Three thousand miles. <laughs> Short little six or seven hour drive there. And what part of Maryland were you from? It was Frederick. Frederick County. Uh I lived in okay. 
uh, Jefferson, uh, Maryland, and then Brunswick, Maryland. Um, it's all around Frederick County, but I always tell people I okay. I used to live in Frederick, and either people know that yeah. or they don't. <laughs> Usually not. Well, that's I mean I I remember Fre- so I mean I know we've I think we've talked about this maybe because I mean I started dating so my wife Kirby is from Maryland. Oh, um, nice. And and we had just started really dating, you know, probably six months before we shot Baker Brothers. So I can't remember if I had like that conversation with you, but. Every time we go home, because her family lives in Crofton, so every time we like go there for the holidays, and we pass or like I see signs for Frederick, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that is where Dallas is from. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some some one of these days, I'm just gonna stop by your house and forget that you don't live there anymore. <laughs> is Dallas home? <laughs> Get off my property. Does Dallas live here? <laughs> you guys gotta come to L.A. I know. I miss, I, it's been a while since I've. I've since never I've been, been out there. I need to get out there. Never been. Maybe see, maybe that's the Baker Brothers. It's they think they're going to make it big in Hollywood, and it's a road mm-hmm. trip out to L.A. That's oh, it. Oh, there we go. That that's would be it. such an iconic shot seeing the Hollywood they're gonna, sign. They're going to be in the picture. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They go, oh, they go to L.A. They make it big, and then they go to a film festival, and the short film, The Baker Brothers, is playing on the screen. <laughs> yeah, except it's like. It's like a knockoff version, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. "Who is stealing our identity?" <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! You know, oh my god! I showed my daughter Baker Brothers the other day and forgot how many curses there were in there. Yeah, that was not- yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally forgot. There's a lot in there. Yep. <laughs> Fix your fucking yep. mask. Yeah. I was like, no, no, we don't say that, right, honey? Nope. <laughs> we're not going to say that. We're not going to repeat that. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I remember like my my I, I can't remember if it was my nieces or my nephews. I have nephews on my wife's side and then I have nieces on my sister's side, but I think we were talking about like watching it with them. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I don't think you're like remembering <laughs> this movie that well, not for children." <laughs> yep. Yeah. This has been fun. Absolutely. Yeah, man, it's good to catch up with you guys. We need to we'll need to catch up uh outside of this too, because I want to hear what all you guys got going on too. Oh absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I'm just trying to be a Playboy model. I yeah, I've seen some of that Dallas you got it going on. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> so so hot, dude. <laughs> so, that Hansel is so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> We should we'll remake we'll, we'll remake the uh, the Chippendale sketch from uh, SNL with you two. Yeah. Oh my oh, god. Per- oh yes. Perfect. <laughs> we'll remake that scene from uh, that movie. Uh... Armed and dangerous. Ar- yeah. Armed yeah. And dangerous. Armed and dangerous. Have you ever seen that, Anthony? No. Wait. What is this? Armed and dangerous. Oh. A John Candy. You gotta see this it. is a movie. Oh shit. <laughs> what a powerhouse. So all right. See, okay, I'm going to my letterbox right now, and I'm going to put it on my watch list. There you go. <laughs> there, see, there you go. And it's letterboxed seen... with a D. Letterboxed? Yes, letterboxed with a D. I'm going to create Correct. a profile, because I'm always constantly getting yelled at for just looking through Netflix for hours. So the... It was uh, it was great having you on the show. I know it's late for you guys. I pounded a Red Bull before this, so. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, uh, but no, it was it was great. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you thinking of me, and it's yeah, a blast. Of course, yeah. Uh, Tim was only guessing your you were the guest like at three weeks in a row, so we finally yeah. had to get you on. <laughs> Who are you gonna guess next? Now, now that I'm done, I don't know. There's only a couple more people from the Baker Brothers yeah. left, so well. Have a good night, and uh, we'll probably we'll have you on the show at some point again. We'll we'll keep absolutely keep you in touch. awesome. Good, I can't wait, and uh, yeah, we'll catch up more soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. See you guys later, See ya. buddy. Bye, Anthony Cottesbody. Oh, the genius, the man, that guy, the man. So good. It's crazy. Yeah. Such a great demeanor. Such a, a great leader too. I know he said like you know everybody else did the work, but Hey, every team needs a leader, and he was that leader for us. And um, just the way he kept yeah. his cool and stayed calm, I mean, that's exactly what you need out of a director. And also the way – I mean, he was a great 
coach on set, you know, and really was able to, um, uh, oh, yeah. hop departments. Ver- yeah. He was very, uh, he had the ability to, to coach you and, um, tell you what he wanted, which is sometimes hard for directors with telling you what you wanted and telling you what to do are two different things. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was, uh, he was awesome. Everybody out there, feel free to, you can message us on Facebook and Instagram. You can comment on our posts and then, uh, you could also slide into our DMS if you will. Plow right in there. (laughs) Feel free to give us a suggestion or a question and we'll answer it on the show. You can do all this at standard time uncensored. That is our little user username at Standard Time Uncensored. We'll talk to you guys next week. Love you. Bye. Bye.